anatomy of the spine. Before you can truly understand the importance of proper back care and injury prevention, it is important to first know and understand how the back functions. This begins with knowing the anatomy of the spine and how these structures function. Maintaining a healthy back A healthy back relies on the skeletal system, soft tissue system and the nervous system to function properly. How does the back work? The spine is the main component of the back. There are many structures that allow the spine to function. The spine is comprised of bones called vertebrae that form the vertebral column. Within the vertebral column is the spinal cord. The main function of the vertebral column are to provide support and movement to upper extremities, sites of attachment for the muscles and ribs, provide flexibility, protect spinal cord and allow passage for nerve roots. The vertebral column consists of seven cervical vertebrae that are flexible, support the head and neck, and protect the spinal cord. Twelve thoracic vertebrae that are larger than the cervical vertebrae, largely immobile, allow for attachment of the ribs, form the chest cavity to protect your organs, and protect the spinal cord. Five lumbar vertebrae that are the largest of the spine, that supports the weight of the upper body and protects the spinal cord. The sacrum which is a shield-shaped bony structure that is located at the base of the lumbar vertebrae and that is connected to the pelvis and forms the posterior pelvic wall and strengthens and stabilizes the pelvis. And the coccyx or tailbone, that provides slight support for the pelvic organs but actually is a bone of little use. A segment of the vertebral column is referred to as functional spinal unit or FSU. The FSU consists of two adjacent vertebrae and the intervertebral disc. Intervertebral disc or IVD. Discs are like shock absorbers that also help permit movement to occur. The discs allow for small rocking movements to occur between each vertebrae. If we did not have the discs, the vertebrae would not be able to move. IVD consists of 15 to 25 different layers of tissues known as annular fibers, collectively referred to as the annulus fibrosis structure, that are arranged in an alternating crisscross pattern that provides strength and support for the disc. The crisscross design makes the disc covering strong enough to contain the nucleus material within and allows the disc to withstand the jolts and jars that tend to arise when you move your spine. Within the annulus at the center of the disc is the nucleus. The nucleus is made up of a gelatinous substance which is mostly water when the discs are young and healthy. As we get older, we lose some of the water from the discs which shrinks the disc and decreases the disc's ability to function like a shock absorber. This creates more stress around the surrounding muscles and ligaments. Intervertebral discs begin deteriorating and growing thinner by age 30. A common misconception is that we slip our discs. Discs do not actually slip. The jelly-like material slips between vertebrae which gives the impression that it has slipped. The protruding disc then puts pressure on the nerves. Ligaments are tough elastic fibers designed to prevent excessive or abnormal movement of the spine. They connect and stabilize the vertebrae as one continuous structure. The muscles of the back are attached to bone by tendons and help to keep vertebrae aligned and provide movement and stabilization of the spine. The main function of the back muscles is postural, keeping the vertebrae aligned and balanced. The abdominal muscles support the abdominal contents and spine and stabilize the spine to protect the back and to maintain balance. There are three sets of abdominal muscles that run in vertical, perpendicular, and angled directions. When used, the abdominal muscles increase the intra-abdominal pressure to help support the spine when lifting high loads. It is important to strengthen both the back and abdominal muscles equally so that one muscle group will not overpower the other. The spinal cord is a long, tube-like band of tissue which connects your brain to your lower back. The spinal cord carries nerve signals from your brain to your body and vice versa. Nerve signals allow you to feel sensations and move your body. Any damage to your spinal cord can affect your movement or function. The spinal cord runs through the vertebral canal. There are 31 nerves that branch out from the spinal cord and travel throughout the body. For additional information visit www.hokao.on.ca